Welcome, 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 welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. Um, haven't done a show in a while because um, there really hasn't been much boxing going on. There's been the ESPN cards. There's actually three cards um, last week, but these cards are, are, are not good. Um, we had a couple of decent fights. Um, Saturday's card, the Emmanuel Navarrete card, uh, that Navarrete fight was so ridiculous and so lopsided at one and, and, and so one-sided and so ridiculous. I, I can't – I mean, I guess that's why maybe they did it in Mexico was because no U.S. commission, no commission in the U.S. or any reasonable commission would approve such a fight. But that was such a one-sided beatdown. But uh, Navarrete's a really good fighter, and, and that's why that fight should never have been made. No Lopez should never have been in the ring with him. Um, that was one-way traffic. Um, after the first round, Navarrete basically said, okay, well, I need to get some rounds and I want to get some work in. And he kind of just, uh, you know, went to work on them and and stretched it out over six rounds. Before that, we had the Josh Franco card. I mean, the uh, we'll get Josh Franco, Josh Greer card. Um, that didn't. That was a good fight. Uh, Mike Planella, who I don't think is anything special, really. Um, went to work. Uh, dropped Greer twice. Uh, Greer tried to rally late. It was too little, too late. You know, we had the Shakur Stevenson card. Um, Shakur Stevenson was was a star. I mean, we've had what five? We've had five total top ranked cards since um, you know the return from boxing. I'll, I'll just run them down. The first one was was the uh, Shakur Stevenson card, where she, Stevenson, um, you know, looked like the superstar that he is in, in destroying Carabao. Um, and that car had the two heavyweights, top uh, right heavyweights, Anderson, Jared Anderson, and uh, Guido Vianello. Uh, and it had Robert C. Ramirez. Two days later, on June 11th, it had the Jesse Magdaleno card, um, in which Vicente found himself out in, in a one sided beatdown. Um, it had the Adam Lopez and, and Correa fight, which was an entertaining fight. Um, you know, some of these fights are entertaining, but again, Lopez is not the future. Uh, Magdaleno looked good, but Magdaleno's not going to have any great success at 130. Um, then the next card was the Josh Greer card, where we got the Greer fight, um, which was a fun fight. Obviously, Greer's not the future. And again, Gre- Greer's got talent, um, but he's 26 now. I mean, he- he's got to make some changes. Um the talent's all there for Grant. Then they had the Giovanni Santillan versus DeMarco fight, which was another fun fight, right? Um, and I thought the judges got it right. But um, if Santillan was what they were thinking was going to be the future there, with their future, Walter White, the guy they were going to run up, and he's not it. Um, that guy doesn't move his head. Um, he doesn't have a whole ton of power. He was supposed to be a puncher. He's not. Um, then we went to thurs- last Thursday's card, um, which was – not a great card. Uh, Gabe Flores looked fine um, and taking apart someone who shouldn't have been in the ring with him. Um, and then you had Kaminsky lose to Clay Collard, so Kaminsky's not it. Oh, oh, you had Biggie Rodriguez from San Antonio. Um, you, had, you had the two un- unbeaten Bantamweights, uh, Biggie Rodriguez and Adrian Saravon. Uh, and, and Biggie Rodriguez looked fantastic. Um, but, you know, I, I, a lot of these cards are either not, you know, their they're town top ranks prospects. If they want to showcase their prospects, this ain't doing it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This this ain't working for them. Uh, their prospect Kaminsky, uh, Correa, um, a lot of their prospects just aren't looking good. Um, we're gonna and, and we're gonna get a couple more of them today. Our Dorno fights. I mean, tomorrow. Our Dorno fights tomorrow. Let me go back to. Uh, the six eleven card, June eleventh. Adam Lopez, Eric Mondragon. 
these are not the fighters that we want to see. And, and like Santion, th these guys are very limited. Uh, these are not future world champions. These aren't even future top 10 to 15 guys. So Giovanni Santion is not a future top 15 um, welterweight at any point in his career. So like we just need to understand that. Um, Guido Baranello, not a, a future top 10 to 15 heavyweight. Jared Anderson, maybe. I, I, you know, if you go to MCR podcast, me, Matt, and Rob, we kind of had a disagreement on him. I, I think Jared Anderson's got some talent. I think he's got some tools. Um, he's just really young. I think he's 19 or 20. Like, it's going to be a while. Uh, but by the time he's 26, 27, could he be a top 10 heavyweight? I, I, I absolutely think so. And then uh, this past Thursday's card on the 18th, it was a bust. Kaminsky, um, th these guys, Servin, these guys just aren't. I hope uh, they, the top right took a look at, at Biggie Rodriguez, and uh, maybe they'll sign him. Um, he's with uh, – he trains in California um, <clears throat> with uh, Robert Garcia and who we'll get to, Josh Franco. Um, and we're going to spend most of the show on, on, on Josh Franco. And uh, Andrew Maloney, because that's going to be an excellent fight. So what, my point was on, on all this traveling that we, we've gotten a lot of trash um, in these cards, and they've not been good cards. Um, and then Saturday's was just the worst. And the right fight was was so lopsided. And so, it, I mean, it's not – we're not even going to mention it here outside of saying that it was one-sided. But we're finally going to get some good cards, okay? And Tuesday's card, and hopefully nothing gets canceled um, because of the pandemic. Um, but it looks like we have some 50, 50 fights and some good fights. Uh, Joseph Adorno, who uh, is 14, 0 and one, who, who is coming off a draw, which a lot of people think he lost, lost to Hector Garcia, uh, back in January, just a couple months ago. He's fighting Alexis Del Bosque. Um, I got news for you. I, I think that's an upset in the making. The Bosque um, is a rugged guy. He's from Dallas, Texas. I, I know him well. He's been in with he's been in with some hitters. He's been in with some good fighters. Um, he's got a loss to Damon Allen, uh, Kevin Nieves. Like he's been in with some guys, Eddie Ramirez. Um, he's mostly lost to those guys. He's got a. He's you know. He's nobody's pushover, and I don't think Adorno's that good. Um, so, to be honest with you, Del Bosque is not a big puncher, okay? But he's a really good boxer. He's got skills. Um, th there could be an upset in this fight. I if they think that this is – they're going to get Adorno back and they're going to get him looking well in this fight, like all is going to be well, uh, that's not it. This is tougher than his last fight. And then you're going to have Christopher Diaz and Jason Sanchez. Uh, Jason Sanchez has fought a lot of cards on the West Coast. Um, again, not a huge puncher. He, he shouldn't knock Diaz out. That shouldn't happen, but Diaz is not a huge puncher either. Um, but Jason Sanchez did, uh, he went the distance with Valdez and did okay. Uh, then he beat Adelson Dos Santos, who sport everybody. You know, Dos Santos is one of those guys who's been in the ring with Herring and, um, yeah, he's made anyone at 126 and 130 Dos Santos has basically been in the ring with, um, and Jason Sanchez destroyed him. I, I absolutely took him apart. Um, this was what that was, yeah that that was the Shakur Stevenson Duet Gonzalez card that was uh, back in October, I believe, of 2019. That's another 50 50 fight. That and Christopher Diaz is a 50 50 fight. Um, I, I don't know. I guess Diaz has the experience, but Jason Sanchez has been in with some good fighters too. So that's another 50 50 fight. And then they want us to think that this Maloney versus Josh Franco fight is a 50 50 fight. That's what we're going to spend the rest of the show on, right? Um, because I, I got I got news.
Um, are you familiar with Maloney? Now, everyone's going to confuse Andrew Maloney with his brother Jason Maloney because almost no American can tell him apart. Do Australians confuse the Charlo brothers like this? I mean, is, is it is it hard for the people in Australia to tell the Charlo brothers apart? I don't know. Uh, but I think you're going to have two 50-50 fights leading up to this in the Adorno fight and the Christopher Diaz fight, and then you're going to get to Franco and Maloney. And this is supposed to be a lot of boxing experts think this is a 50 50 fight. The bookmakers thought Maloney is a wide hit. I'm telling you right now, Franco's going to tear this guy up. Um, this is, I don't want to say it's going to be an easy fight, but Negret is clearly better than Maloney. And Franco went up to 118 to fight Negret. And now he's probably got his natural way to 115 against the guy who's not as good as Negret. I, I, I got Franco ninth round TKO. How's that? I don't know that Maloney's better than Burgos, who, who who Franco just beat in San Antonio early in the year. Um, but I, if Franco gets this fight, he's fast-tracked to be the uh, most improved fighter of the year. How's that? Um, but let me know what you think. Leave your predictions. Leave your thoughts, comments below. I think this is actually going to be a good card. It's the first time we've had a pretty good card. Um, in these top-ranked cards, where they're not filled with one-sided mismatches or fights that really aren't the most skilled fighter. We're going to have three good fights um, tomorrow. And Diaz has fought for a world title. He's a decent fighter. Uh, Ardorno was a hot shot prospect. That may not work out. And then we're going to have this Maloney and Franco scrap, which is going to be an entertaining scrap. But I just think Franco is way too much for him. I don't see a path to victory for Maloney. Go back and watch those fights that I told you about, the Maloney-Gonzalez fight, and then go back and watch some of Franco's fights with Negret um, and Bazan, which was on the undercard of, of Canelo and, and Liam Smith. Let me know what y'all think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. From Texas to the world, thank you. God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.